You wanna over here? Uh, Hi guys. Oh, thank you, Mickey. Uh, before we get into the fights, did you get uh, end up finding your luggage that got lost on the way over here? <laughs> yes, uh, it got it got here three days uh, after. So, but it's good. It's good, you know. I always get dirty, so I always have some extra stuff in my carry on. So, sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Mikey Brown wasn't that lucky, so he had to buy uh, everything. So yeah. Did they find his stuff too? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, six six pieces were missing, but we got everything. So lucky us and. The funny thing is that uh, our flight got canceled, the first one. Then we lost our luggage. They lost our luggage. Uh, but we're here, you know, so it's good. It's good. Well, kind of going off of that, how has preparation for this fight camp been, uh, this fight been? I think this is only your fourth three-round fight in the UFC, so have you, enjoy <laughs> have you enjoyed preparing for a three-round fight as opposed to a five-round fight? It is. There, there was not a big difference. And uh, same, like people were saying that I should get an easy fight. What does it mean to get an easy fight? You know, fight is a fight. It's a fight. It's a cherry on the top of the birthday cake. And the preparation is hard. The hard work is done so many weeks before, and very often people don't get it. And I, man, I've been training not only like eight, twelve weeks, like the camp camps usually look like. I, I've I've been training for this fight like four or five months at American Top Team only, you know. And in October last year, I decided to be back. So I started training more and more in Poland uh, because uh, I took a longer break. I had some things to do, to be done, to take care of, uh, of in Poland. And and I couldn't go back to the States. So in the middle of January, I, I was back to American Top Team and put put in hell of a performance, you know. I'm in the best shape ever. Until the end of March, I didn't know I was going to fight, but I was training like I was going to fight 13 times a, a, a week, every week. So you can imagine how much of effort, sacrificing, tears, blood, sweat, uh, up and downs I put into this camp, you know, and I feel in the best shape ever, but as you know, it's all about this one night <laughs> in Singapore, about this one morning, this one fight. So I'm li really looking forward and I, I really believe that I will feel great and rock and roll. Uh, I'm ready for anything and everything. So, but yeah, I'm in the best shape ever and I know where the is as well. It seems like since your last fight and you took that time off, various interviews, you would say, like, I hope to run that back with her, or if someone else has the title, I'd like to fight them. When she did lose to Rose in, in Madison Square Garden, did you just assume that she was most likely next for you and you just got into camp preparing for her specifically, or did you actually wait for a name to st start preparing for someone? Uh, big fights only, and... Uh, and big fights only, and she's one of the best. She made it to the league. She was the champ. I Me mean, neither. So we made it, you know. And she's she's the best. Even after her two losses, she proved that she's one of the best, one of the toughest in this division. So I know there is lots of talk about another girls who should get the title shot, but there are girls, and there we show up. Me, Whaley, Rose, and we put on hell of a fights every time, you know. And this is what. This business is about, you know, it's, it's not about boring fights. It's not about just fights. It's all about being the best every single time you step there. That's the thing. So uh, I send a new contract. I'm happy with, but I'm happy to get the fight of the year again, you know, this year, two years later. I don't know if you heard, but Dana White did an interview today, and he said the winner of this will fight for the title next. And I think you obviously said that if you win, you want to fight for the title. I'm not surprised. Yeah. I knew that. I knew about that uh, from my last fight, you know, because, yeah, actually, I knew that. So I would not sign agreement for this fight if I didn't know that I was going to be in the next after winning on, on Sunday. So, yeah. I knew that, and I'm not surprised. <laughs> it's good, man. <laughs> I feel like we both deserve. It's it's surprising what happened in the fight between Rose and Carla, but but what? It is what it is, you know. <laughs> it is what it is. Yana, how big a difference do you think uh, having this fight at three rounds will be from five rounds? Oh, definitely. Ah, uh, you know, sometimes the first round is like we read each other. But 
there is no time to do this, you know. So from the first seconds, I will have to uh, put put in work, and and we will have to play my game. I will <sighs> from so from the first seconds of the fight, I will have to do my best, you know. That's the thing. That's the thing. Was there any conversation with the UFC about making this five rounds or not uh, really? No, I know the fans wanted, and 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 there was an idea, but we ended up fighting three rounds. Uh, it's also because of the two title fights, you know, on this card. And, and yeah, when that's okay. When you think about legacy and you say about putting on the best fights, obviously your first fight was one of the best of all time. So do you think like, okay, I win this one on Saturday or Sunday morning, and then in the future we'll do a trilogy fight and it will be the biggest thing in women's MMA history? Mm, let's see after Sunday, you know, but when I think of legacy, like yesterday or the day before, because I've done so much media, so many interviews. And after uh, Rose lost to Carla, the media went crazy, you know? So I've done really like maybe 40 interviews, 50 interviews with this fight week since last uh, Carla, Carla's fight and Rose's fight. But uh, I realized yesterday that next year it's going, I will hit second decade uh, from the time I started doing martial arts and I'm turning 35 this year, you know, I'm old, but <laughs> I'm like, dude, it's more than half of my life, you know, so when people questioning my break, la or la last two years b break, I'm like, dude, I've been like, I'm a, I'm a hard worker, you know, I'm a hustler and and uh, sports-wise, business-wise, I'm a hustler and I, ne I need it. Just I needed that for myself, but legacy winning over Wei Zhang, one of the greatest, going for the belt, and and start defending my my belt, the new belt, you know, once again. Uh, last one for me. Do you think that's something that younger fighters should maybe be aware of? That actually it's okay to take some breaks sometimes, and you don't have to go 100 miles an hour for your entire career. Yeah, I always tell people that you can't never stop, you know, you can slow down, but you can't never stop. So I slowed down, I was training every single day, but I just haven't fought, you know, I I had things to do because I'm full of life, full of passion, hobbies, uh, things to do. And uh, I had no time because of I was very active, you know, and uh, in the octagon, but you know, you don't know h how much time is left in my your life so i don't want to waste any 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 minute of my life any second of my life so i just decided to do things and and make them the best way i can do and get it done and now i have time to to be here fight, fighting in singapore uh, but i knew that after this long break I was going. I was going to have to prepare longer, and this is what I've done, you know, with my team, the Mar American top team, and I'm very, very proud of 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 myself, the team, Mikey Brown, Katar Kubis, ATT Nation, all the people, and uh, I'm the winner already, you know, for myself. That's the most important thing, uh, because of the amount of work, because of the amount of work, but. Uh, any advice for fighters? Yes, yeah, sometimes it's good to take a break, you know, step back a little bit and look at look at the big picture. Look at the, pic the, the big picture because sometimes it gets so narrow, you don't see everything. Quick question, Joanna. So if you're in this fight, so when would you back to the octagon and what would, what would it be like trilogy fight versus uh, Zhang Weili or title shot? Uh, Carla Esparza holds, is holding the belt, so she's ne uh, after I will get my uh, hand raised on, on Sunday in Singapore, I will go for the belt and fighting Carla Esparza. What's after? I don't know. Like uh, I'm focused on, on this fight with Wei Li Zhang and, and maybe on another step. I'm planning next step, you know, to, to fight for the belt, but we'll yeah. see. Yeah. Trilogy? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. When would you back to the octagon? I would... I would I, I, I would love to be back as soon as possible, you know, it depends on how my body is going to feel after the fight, but uh, Madison Square Garden or uh, Fight Island uh, sound good to me, you know, but I like to plan my life, you know, I, I adjust my uh, 
life to what's happening in my life every single day. You know what I mean? Like, I have a plan. I like to have a plan. I like to, I like to stick to the plan and, and, and make work and, and work for it to make it happen. And, and uh, I don't know, but for me, winning in Singapore is the most important thing right now, but fighting for the belt at the MSG, where I defended my belt back in a day, where I lost the belt, uh, sounds well, good to me. How do you see the results of the fight? You know, the last time you fight versus John Whaley is the five round craziest fight, woman fight history in the world seeing the fight. And this time, would you give the decision to the referee's hand? Of course, I don't want to leave it in the judge's hands, but sometimes, uh, you know, <laughs> you not always get what you wish for, you know. I wish for knockout, I wish for submission, but it's not that easy, you know, especially at this level where I, uh, I'm at, you know, and where you junk. So uh, it's going to be the toughest fight in my fighting career, but I'm, 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 I'm ready, you know, I'm ready. Thank you. Thanks. Joanna, right here. To your right. Yeah. Uh, speaking of your future plans, you told me yesterday you want to do the DACA rally. Uh, can you explain what that is to people who may not know and why you want to do this? DACA rally. I I did my I did my racing debut as as an as an as an driver. You know, so if I will do one half amateur uh, racing, I will get my pro license. And you know, DACA race is like. Holy moly, the, the craziest thing is that you can't, you can't take shower, you know? This is what scares me because I'm a very clean person. But, uh, you know, I love doing things. And back in the day when I was a teenager, when I was a little girl, I, 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 I dreamed, for example, about a trip to the States. And, and I was visualizing New York, um, uh, Manhattan. And uh, I was like, oh, you're never going to make it, kid. You know, it's too far, it's too expensive. And after so many years, my, my picture was hanging at, at Times Square, you know. And so every dream can come true. And now I have uh, all the money. So I mean, like, the, the money I haven't had back in the day. So I can really do things I wanted to do when I was a teenager or when I was younger. And I just want to challenge myself you know i'm very competitive and i want to challenge myself i love uh, motorsport and i see myself uh, doing dakar race it's very hard race isn't easy you have to uh, the temperature the climate uh, everything is so hard so difficult but I, I i just love to challenge myself you know and it's something i i i wanted to do uh, for a long time when is that uh, what when is it when? Yeah. It's every year. Okay. It's every year. Do so you know I need to time? be retired because it's it's also very dangerous, you know. So uh, last time I was uh, b before my racing debut, I had like a training, and my car flipped. Flipped, you say? Flipped. Uh, it was kind of funny, you know, scary. But oh gosh! So I did test like if I really want to do it or it's just my wishy washy. But I was like. Holy moly, it's different than fighting, you know, the emotions and, and how you have to be uh, well prepared for this. It's amazing, you know. I have tons of respect to all kinds of sports and athletes, but this is amazing, you know. This is what I really want to do. And we talk about your legacy in this division, in this sport. Uh, you haven't fought for 27 months, and only just now, Carla Esparza tied your record for the most wins in the division with 10. Uh, and you have still the lead on many other records. What does that kind of show about the, the work you put in before you took this layoff? Mm, that I was super active, you know, that I was the champ for a reason, that I was very dominant and dedicated. Mm, and, and I'm still, you know, and... They can take all the, all the, all the I don't know records. I will like I will just go there and do my thing. You know, <laughs> became the strawweight champ for the second time, and they they had the their hasn't born they had the their haven't been hasn't been born a girl who could tie my record. You know, yet. So yeah, let's see in the strawweight division, of course. Thank you guys. Oh, 